guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lucy Lipsy. We're back with another day of 31 days of Spooktober. I hope you're all doing good. I hope you're all having a good day. Let's get ready to sit down, put your feet up, grab yourself a hot drink, and let's get stuck in to the story. So this is a story about a mental asylum. It was serving as different things before that, but we're gonna discuss that shortly. And it has been known to have quite a few strange hauntings and poltergeist activity. Let's dive in guys to Pool Park Asylum in Ruffin. So the land started off as a deer hunting area for the people who lived in Ruffin Castle. So following that, it was passed around for a little while. Thought that it dated back to the 1200s. So until the 1500s, it was passed around from wealthy owner to wealthy owner. Then in the 1500s, the Salesbury's bought it. Then they bought it and decided to divide it into two. So the one half would be the father's and one half would be the son's. Now unfortunately, the son, Charles, died very young and ended up not being able to inherit his half of the estate. So then it was left to the father's daughter instead of the son when she got married to her husband, Sir Walter Baggett. So it stayed with the Baggetts, and in 1862 they ended up revamping the whole building. They wanted to make it like a mock Tudor vibe, so they didn't even skimp on this. They basically said, we want this, so we're going to pay as much as we have to for it. They ended up putting in a huge staircase, which is still there to this day, and it said that, that was belonging to a bishop before them. So they paid a good dollar to get that staircase. But despite it still being owned by them, they hardly spent any time there at all. And then they ended up actually losing it to a massive bet in the horse racing in 1928. So the actual house was not sold, but the full estate was sold in shares. A timber man from Plant Trust actually ended up buying the majority of the land. And he actually made a lot of money off all of the timber that he ended up getting from them. Then in the mid 1930s, it was bought by local authorities. Now they bought it with the intention of converting it into a convalescent home for around 80 men. However, when the war came around, they ended up having about 120 men in total there. They actually ended up building a prisoner of war camp on the estate as well. Then, in 1949, if you haven't guessed it, they ended up converting it into a mental hospital. So this was basically to take the pressure off Denby Mental Asylum. And at this point, the Denby Mental Asylum was like creaking at the scenes because there were just so many people in there. It was bursting out of the door. They started to allow female patients in at this point. They were allowing more of a mix of people to be left in. However, in the late 60s, early 70s, there was a huge strike in Wales where they shut down all of the mental asylums and this didn't skip by Pool Park Asylum, it also got shut down. However, it did get shut down a little later and it stayed open until 1989 and then it closed. So then, it was sold in 1992 and nothing has happened to the building since. It's a grade two this building, however, the interior is stripped and I can't work out how they were allowed to do that. It's decaying, it's rotten, it's a complete mess on the inside. As you can imagine, this is due to kids getting in and playing in the area. I said kids, I mean teens. And then there's also been an increase in ghost hunters going to the building. Now many paranormal investigation teams have been to the building but in 2019, in September, Robert Holmes, who owned the building, actually asked the public not to go there anymore. They said it's just not safe at all, so to go there is a danger to yourself. It's not something we're there when we are going to get police to patrol the area. And if you enter the building, if you enter the premises, you are putting yourself in danger. The floors collapse through. It's an unsafe building. They also said, as the building being haunted, we can confidently quote that we have worked here for many months and none of our employees have experienced any paranormal phenomena in any way. However, it is known as North Wales's most haunted asylum. So this has got to give some way here. Someone's got to be telling the truth. So the most famous paranormal group to have been there is the Spirit Walkers. Now the main lady who runs this is Beth Hopper. 
and she started it just because she had an interest in it and it ended up taking off nicely. Now they've actually visited multiple times however the last time she went she said that she filmed through a broken window and she said that she couldn't actually hear anything when she was filming she just stuck her camera in to see and when she got back to the car she was frightened by what she heard. She played the video and at 1 minute 5 seconds she realised there had been an overbearing growling noise throughout the video. She played it back and panicked. She said they also performed EVP sessions, electric voice phenomena and she said that they did actually pick up the same kind of noises, growling and screaming through that method. They said they actually videoed this and when they put it online a lot of people said that they sounded like they were being tortured Whoever they are. She said one time that a friend of hers went, now this is a young lady And she was stood at the bottom of the staircase It was pitch black and they couldn't see anything But when someone shone a light on her She said nobody stood next to me, I thought someone stood next to me And Beth said no there was nobody stood next to you, I'm over here And basically this girl said I thought it was. I thought it was a nurse. She'd seen a Victorian era nurse stood next to her. There's also reports of an ex-patient there. Now it seems like he thinks that he's a Roman soldier. He marches up and down the corridors. He sounds like a soldier and he throws rocks at anyone that comes near his estate. There are lots of noises and footsteps heard by everyone who enters the building. It's said that the house is possessed by an evil spirit. Plenty of people have said they've been attacked there and believe that there is a poltergeist hanging around the building. They say that the feeling in there is very aggressive, like someone doesn't want them there. Now I'm going to insert a photo here guys, and this is where Beth Hopper thought that she had caught a picture of a noose. I don't know if you guys see it. I do see that it looks like there's something stood there, however I'm not sure how I feel. Let me know what you think in the comments below guys. Now it's said that this asylum is known as the Devil's Playground. People think that the devil himself resides there. The local people around the area seem to think that it's a portal to hell itself. And when they've been there and done EVP sessions, they've heard the words evil, witches, and we are here. One visitor was actually pushed over and dragged backwards, scratching all their back by nothing. Which creeps me out. Guys, do not go to this place. It is illegal for you to go into this building. If you go there, go at your own risk. I am not telling anyone that it's okay to go there. Just be careful. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you've been to this building before, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it. Leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so I can alert you every single time I upload to my channel. Remember guys, never let anyone dull your sparkle. It's not for me to say.